brightest day and blackest night. No evil shall escape my sight. Let those who worship evil's might beware my power. Green Lantern's life. Hello again, everyone, and welcome to another edition of Monkey Boy Presents the DC Comics Superhero Collection. Today we have for you issue four, Green Lantern. Uh, welcome back. I, of course, am your host, the Monkey Boy, a.k.a. Jay, to his friends. Happy to bring you this really, really great issue, actually. This, of course, would be the Hal Jordan Green Lantern, the most famous of the Green Lanterns, uh, of course, from the old Super Friends cartoon show. Uh, and the recent movie starring Ryan Reynolds. And uh, yeah, we're gonna delve into this issue pretty quick. There's not a whole lot to say here. Um, this, of course, is not the first Green Lantern in the DC Universe. The first Green Lantern was, of course, Alan Scott. They did make a figure of him as well, so we'll get to him in sequence eventually. I just thought I'd mention that real quick. Uh, but Hal Jordan is probably the most famous of the Green Lanterns, which is why they decided to feature him fourth. Again, I am surprised they have skipped over Wonder Woman, but uh, nevertheless, a great figure, a founding member of the Justice League. We will be going over the magazine, as usual, which covers everything you need to know about the character. And then we'll dive right into the figure. You can do a quick look at him. Uh, the good, the bad, the ugly. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen, and I give you DC Comics Superhero Collection, issue number four, Green Lantern. So who exactly is the Green Lantern? Well, Green Lantern in this case is Hal Jordan, a captain in the United States Air Force and a test pilot for Ferris Aircraft, which is actually the same company that his father was a test pilot for. And while on one of his test flights, he spotted a UFO that crashed into him. They crash landed near each other, and Hal ran to inspect the wreckage of this weird alien spacecraft to find the pilot dying inside the pilot informing him that he was something called a Green Lantern, that the ring had chosen him, and handed Hal this glowing green ring and a lantern. This alien pilot then died right in front of Hal, and Hal slipped the ring on, and the next thing he knew, he was covered in this weird green costume with a mask on his face, and he could fly, and he could... Uh, create anything that he could imagine out of this green energy emitting from this ring that he had just been given. Hal, of course, uses this power for good and went on to become uh, the hero of Coast City, which is basically his Gotham, his metropolis. Uh, it's in California, and he became their hero. Shortly after becoming a superhero, though, and getting accustomed to the lifestyle, a strange alien visitor wearing an identical costume to Hal's approached him and informed him that he was just a simple cog in a much larger machine and transported him back to the home planet of the Green Lanterns, a planet called Oa. And it's there that Hal learned the Oath of the Green Lanterns and that he learned he was basically now an intergalactic police officer and that there was an entire Green Lantern Corps uh, basically heroes from across the universe that protected and patrolled their home worlds and sectors of space. So the Green Lantern was in essence DC's science fiction property. It was their intergalactic extraterrestrial sort of Star Trek type of uh, comic book. And for years he traipsed around the universe righting wrongs and fighting injustices here and there. Uh, eventually returning to Earth, where he and fellow Justice Leaguer Green Arrow uh, grew to become very close friends, and uh, Green Arrow grounded the Green Lantern, and they traveled uh, the country together, tackling social injustices, and uh, the comic book itself tackled real-world issues of the time, such as race relations and drug addiction. 
Andrew section deal with Hal's fall from grace after he had become infected with the fear entity known as Parallax. This happened shortly after his hometown of Coast City had been leveled by the evil cyborg Superman and the intergalactic space tyrant known as Mongol. This event pushed Hal over the edge, he turned on the core, he slaughtered his fellow corpsmen and the guardians until there was only one guardian left. He tried to erase history and reset the clock, only to be fought against by his own fellow heroes, former fellow heroes. After he came to his senses, he fled to the edges of the universe and went into a self-imposed exile. He returned shortly thereafter to save the planet by throwing himself into the sun in an effort to reignite it. Hal's body was destroyed as a result of the explosion to reignite the sun, but his spirit lived on because it was attached to God's spirit of vengeance in the DC universe and being known as the Spectre. Hal was basically given a chance to travel with the Spectre and earn a chance at redemption and another chance at life. Eventually, he served his penance and was reborn again as Hal Jordan, the Green Lantern of Space Sector 2814. And finally, we're given a quick little blurb about the Guardians and who they are. Next up, the classic storyline section as always. Hal Jordan also gets three storylines to choose from. The first in this set is basically the Green Arrow Green Lantern team up, which began in Green Lantern issue number 76. This particular run of the series was the fact that it made Green Lantern terrestrial. No longer was he coming and going from Earth and solving intergalactic problems. He was traveling the country with Green Arrow and dealing with social problems and injustices. Next up we have the trade paperback of Green Lantern Emerald Twilight New Dawn. And this is the collective works of basically what was Green Lantern's fall from grace, his death, and the passing of the torch to the new Green Lantern in the form of Kyle Rayner. Finally, the trade paperback Green Lantern Rebirth, which again collects all of the issues dealing with the return of Hal Jordan as the Green Lantern. This also saw the rebirth of the Green Lantern Corps as a force for good in the universe. Next up, as always, we have the Allies and Enemies section detailing his greatest allies and deadliest enemies. Uh, one of my favorites in this section, of course, is fellow Green Lantern, Kilowog. In the Green Lantern's iconography section, we get to learn a little bit more about the ring and how it functions. We get to see some of the other Green Lanterns in action. We have the Oath of the Lanterns, and we also learn how it's willpower that helps them to function. It also talks a little bit about the central power battery. with the other Green Lanterns that protect the Earth and Space Sector 2814, dealing first with Abin Sur, the Green Lantern who controlled this section for decades. It also talks about the other three active Green Lanterns, in addition to Hal Jordan, who also protect the Earth, uh, Guy Gardner, Jon Stewart, and Kyle Rayner. Here he is, Hal Jordan, Green Lantern, and um, overall I have to say, it's good. It's not great. Um, it's a step back, I think, from the Joker, the previous figure. Not to say it's not a nice figure, it's a very nice figure, it's just it's a much more simple figure than the Joker was. There's a lot less going on. Um, again, it's completely hand-painted, so no decals, which is always a plus. That is a hand-painted Green Lantern logo on the chest. Uh, the face is great, the mask is great. Um, you know, it's just, it's a very basic, you know, three colors, um, he does have some highlights in his hair, which I've taken some better pictures of, so you'll see that in close up. One thing I have to mention is, uh, the green has a sort of metallic fleck in it, it's hard to tell from this, um, but I tried to capture it with some of the pictures. Um, in some areas it works, in some it doesn't work so much, and also it depends on how the light is hitting it. Uh, overall, though, I have to say it's it's pretty decent, and uh, there are going to be some more pictures here in just a second. Now, stand the 
top, the classic DC logo, which is molded to the base as usual, and on the underside, we find his name in a couple different languages, along with a serial number, and just for the heck of it, I took a group shot with John, Kyle, and Guy, the other As I said, I really like the figure. Let's get right into this. The good. I, I like the costume. I like the fact that there are no decals. I think it's really, really nice. Uh, the paint scheme is good overall. The face is good. The lantern is especially good. The interior of the lens on the lantern on both sides looks as though it's glowing on the interior. It's a really nice touch. The bad. I'm not crazy about the shade of green they decided to go with. I would have liked a lighter shade of green, and I'm not crazy about the metallic fleck they tried to add into the paint. In some spots it's way too heavy and it just looks like silver, and in other spots it's just not there at all. Uh, and again, it depends on how the light hits it. He's what I would call a 10-footer. He looks good from about 10 feet away. Um, I like the fact that they spent time putting the ring, but again, it's just a little blob of paint. So, you know, it's nice, it's cool that it's there, but it's, you know, just a blob. But whatever. Overall, I like the figure. These are just not minor nitpicks, but I have to make them. Uh, the ugly, there really isn't anything ugly about the figure. Overall, it's a great figure. It really, truly is. Uh, I love having Hal in the line. I'm glad they added him. I'm really still surprised they didn't go with Wonder Woman first, but Hal is wonderful to have. Uh, stay tuned for a quick trailer of the next issue in the series, issue number five. We're already at five. Goodness. Uh, once again, I am your humble host, the Monkey Boy. I hope you have enjoyed this review of Green Lantern. Hope you tune in for the next one. Thank you for watching.